um, technology, empowerment, and society. Mm. These are three concepts that in today's world we all grapple with. Three concepts that go hand in hand. Three concepts that are not just inevitable, but are but are also the fuel that guide us in every sector in life. Good afternoon to everybody and a very hearty welcome. On behalf, my name is Amy Workis. On behalf of me and my participants, Tamanna Bell, Drishti Sharma, Nikita Bhingra, I welcome you, our esteemed, our esteemed guest, Sir Santosh Talghatti, to today's conversation. Good afternoon, Sir. How are you today? Good afternoon, Ms. Amy Varghese, Nikita, Drishti, and Tamanna. Namaste to you all. Thank you very much for being with us online. Just to add to this, Mr. Santosh Talghatti has been a remarkable change maker in our society. He is not just a social activist, but is also an entrepreneur who dreams to connect one lakh schools across India and make his dream of a global classroom reality very soon. It's a pleasure to have you with us, sir. Thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. To begin with, to dive straight into our topic for today, for which I think our background, we're all prepared and we're ready to hit it laser head on. So to begin with, I would like to say, our, what we would like to talk about today is our society, social innovation, social development, and the role of technology that it plays in this concept. So to begin with all of this, and uh, as you and your background, you are so deeply involved in concepts that relate to this, just to talk a little bit about your background, I would like to ask you, when I learned about your endeavors and your achievements so far, I felt I must ask you, what was it that enlightened, can you please enlighten us on what it was that sparked this innovation in your mind at grassroots level and because of which you wanted to go about doing so many other factors and what was it that initially sparked the passion in your mind to do what you did today? Thank you so much, first of all. And hello, everyone. This is a really wonderful question because this is a heart oriented question. We do so many things, but it starts somewhere, you know, like how the river has a start. Everything has a start. And who starts it? Actually, does someone inspire us, or it is a self inspiration, or it is a gift from, you know, uh, nature or God? So, this is all different realities. Because the way uh, I have cultivated myself, despite of all other challenges, the way I, I loved myself in bringing myself to the stages, to the platforms, to the people, if I felt that I'm, I need to meet this person, I just go, I don't stop anywhere, I don't find any hindrances and I go and meet that person. But when you decide something to go somewhere and do something, everything starts from here and here, you know? And then when your body supports you, when your family supports you, and when you yourself yes, supports you, Absolutely. the whole journey starts. Similarly, my journey started with the insight and inner inspiration always because I felt that getting ranks, every, everybody brings the rank. You know, I was also bringing rank. Then what extra I can do? You know, in what way I, I am different? Am I different by look? Am I different by my thoughts? Am I different by my writing? Am I different by my... You know, social thoughts. This way, I started my, uh, you know, thinking. My thoughts led me to better work, and my better work led me to innovation, and my innovation led me to reach out to society, and the society made me a real person. This is what I say. Thank you so much. Yeah. This is not just heartwarming, but I'm so full of awe after listening to your answer because something I would like to tell everybody is uh, engaging in social tasks like this not only mentally but also physically it is a herculean challenge and a herculean task not always i'm aware you don't get support not always things are easy for you like you spoke of hindrances i think most of your journey would have comprised of that but you know to keep going in spite of all this and you know, easier said than done, as they say. It is much easier said than done. Since you've accomplished quite a feat in this field, 
I would like to ask you, what is it that kept you motivated in spite of all this that I'm sure you faced in your journey? What is it that kept you going and does keep you even today? Actually, uh, when, when I was a child, I used to see that there are you know, many things that I can achieve. And then I, I had that insight that only because my parents have less money, so should I be deprived by uh, many facilities in the world, you know? And then uh, somebody is going to higher level college and higher level course and higher level things. Then I had an insight that can a normal child also can achieve everything that, that those uh, rich people can achieve. Is it possible? And really I started teaching those rich guys who were studying in English medium. I was in Canada medium, but I started teaching them. And they started understanding mathematics, science, and even history. I remember, and they were very proud of me. And then that insight, and even since childhood, I made myself in such a way that in whichever class I studied, I was the master trainer over there. And I was in seventh standard. I was teaching English and mathematics, complete subjects, not there to support teacher. But the teacher had given me the complete subjects to take. And this way, I developed, 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 and love with wow. teachers and love with friends. This made me a very passionate person. And when I completed the, you know, the first level of graduation, then I felt that I must do something different than what other people are yeah. doing. Then I did a lot of experiment with myself, but in teaching and developing without putting me in any crisis and calamities, always, uh, you know, put in the respected position with, with right. respected hands and could build myself because building society, one thing is very important. We all talk about Absolutely. social development, social development. Unless you develop True. yourself in a proper way, we cannot say that we are developing society. Otherwise, it is like a, a self-crime that you are suffering and you are thinking mm -hmm. of others. That is not the good way. The real way is Absolutely. you develop the way you want yourself. Be the change that want to, what you want to see in others. You want Can to I, see. Yeah, but that what you want to see or what you want to see. I don't know the exact phrase of Mahatma Gandhi, but I can say in my own words, that if I want something to be seen in others, can I be that master? Can I be that you know rich actor? Can I be that presenter? At, at your age, in 15, you know, 18, 20, yeah. I used to imagine that I am addressing millions of people. You know That was going on in my mind always. You know While walking, while talking, while thinking, there is only one message that I am training and I am developing millions of people and they are following me and I am doing something. And then always this one. And I started experimenting. And today that is reality. That in different, uh, not only in education sector, in different Wonderful. sectors. I... As we dive in further to our conversation, hitting straight to our topic of how social development is affected or the role of technology in social development. I would like to ask you, um, considering the various roles you play in society, you have played in society, things you aspire to do. Taking from all of this, how far, according to your experience, we as a society, as a country, how far have we achieved the goal of being technologically driven? And what future lies ahead, according to you? Like how in the, in the, in the, uh, in the serials, if you see some religious serials, you can see that Devi is carrying some shatras, you know, and Deva is also, you know, yes. some gods are carrying some shatras, whether it is a weapon, or it is a sword, or it is Gada, or it is Chakra, something like that. So they symbolize us something, you know. They symbolize that in today's world, technology is the tool that we are carrying. Everybody is carrying. We are carrying mobile means what we are all, you know, like Absolutely. holding, like how he used to hold it's this the tool, Sudarsh, Sudarshan yeah. Chakra, you know, like that is, that is a symbol. So we all are having our bigger tools, but can I use it effectively? That is very important. It is such a you know, that no other generations have ever experienced television, mobile, Facebook. These are all of the gifts. Okay, we cannot just say that, you know, just taken granted. If you imagine just 100 Absolutely. years before, there was no such facilities. Not even television was there 100 years before. You know, no internet connection, nothing. Even kings didn't uh, enjoy the way we are enjoying now. Even kings, if they no. wanted to, to make such a meeting, they had to call and special attention, they had to send people. And today, just see in one click, and we can handle such a beautiful conversation that even the minister uh, starts sending the whole uh, content and their team is working now. Yesterday, because of you, now their team is working to convert the entire uh, that language content to Hindi and English. 
to inspire them. So they are working now. So this is something which we want, you know, like making it move. Technology is a tool to make you move. And see, yeah, there are some other, other way of looking at also. Yes, we are so active now. And this is my life you now, you know. This is my life, this is my wife, and this is my mother, this is my sister, this is my everything. This is, in fact, this is my God as well. Okay, if I miss this one, as if I have missed my entire life, you know. In this way, technology is playing. The technology has become the integrated part of your life. We cannot separate it from you. Means the moment I take the mobile from Tamanna away, her all contacts went off, as if she has lost herself in that mobile. You must have seen some people who lose the mobile, as if they have lost themselves. Oh my God, where is that mobile? Because they know that all life is there inside. So similarly, this technology has such a power that everyone has to experience this in a better way. It is not, not just to have the WhatsApp and social media and you know make some uh, TikTok videos and dance and something like that. To make the innovation. That's right. Uh, imagine that Vishwaji Maharaj's picture is there. If we had the internet connection, what kind of revolution, even more than what he has done, would have been done. Then we have been given this one. Can't I dare to do something new in this life? Or just have to take granted that, oh, okay, everybody has mobile and I have mobile. Everybody has internet connection, I have internet connection. Everybody has mm -hmm. laptop, I have laptop. But with your laptop, what magic you can do? Like how today you are doing the magic by interviewing someone. Tamanna is doing magic by joining someone. This uh, this piece, join, you know, uh, thinking of the COVID, though she cannot enter any lab because of her education or you know, even thought process, but at least the thoughts are not stopping her to think over that. So this technology keeps you connected with the reality, and not only reality, the futuristic reality. So I love technology. In fact, technology is my best life partner, I should say. I really like, so from your conversation, the zeal and the grit you have to actually translate a vision into reality. As you just said, on one hand, we have technology that is so integral and so indispensable. On the other hand, we see so many vices of technology as well. I think everybody would agree to that. Before we dive in further to our conversation, I would like Tamanna to add something. I think she would contribute to this at this point. Tamanna? <laughs> Yes, Over to you. Um, am I audible? Yeah, yeah. Audible. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, sir, as you said, uh, that we are all connected to technology so much, uh, so that we can't live without it, particularly. Um, so, don't you think it's taking us away from actual essence of living, as said by Maslow in his uh, need theory, like the need of self-actualization and self-realization, like when when we uh, when we are able to relate to ourselves and when we know what's happening in the next room to us other than just the world yeah that that is one thought but even we should even think one one way ahead than him because we always stick to some great people and what they thought and beyond that we don't go but what tamanna says is also very important what a great person said is 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 a reality but the real reality is what you think now can you really live without technology? I say I cannot. Okay, I suppose in today's world, when the world is standing on the economy and also in the human behavior and human connectivity, just imagine the way the economic upliftment happened only due to technology in India. And India is now aggressor in the entire Absolutely. world because of the technology. And even in the human behavior and human connectivity. Now, where, where are we talking about the technology? We are discussing about the human realities now. So in that way, in the, in the material way, technology is very important. In the spiritual way, it, what he said is in the spiritual way. So you are more into technology, you are talking about technology, you are connecting to the world, but have you connected with your own self? Yes, that part always remains, but the person who is self-realized, for him it is greatest too. The person who is not self-realized, for him it is maybe you know you can take it in a different way he has to think uh, sometime he has to go for the meditation and uh, also actualization also for the suppose for example if i am the person of you know, sitting with such an obvious body and you know with, without moving something anything would you have load to talk to me even if you have loud i might not have enjoyed that but today i'm enjoying this technology why because i have a you know uh, a strengthening enthusiasm and also high motivated, a good body, 
this is all it all didn't come by technology it all came by my self efforts so we need to categorize in this way in one way you have to use technology for social building and economic building in other way you have to keep technology away a little bit for your self development for example for your exercise for your meditation you know for your self improvement and for your structure like so nikita could write a very good uh, script and this is not a technology it is her hand and her heart which draws that so we need to practice some hand heart oriented things as well it is not only 100% technology we need to balance can you learn but i am balanced i should say that you know i i can happily say that i am highly balanced with technology and also spirit spirit and technology these two things are very important when you have spirit and technology with you you are most powerful person in the world but if something is lacking in you if you have technology and no spirit then you you can't use even iphone better okay even iphone has no meaning and if you have uh, spirit but you don't have technology then again you have everything but you cannot reach out to the world so we need uh, the balance of technology and also spirit so these actually spirituality word it came from the spirit spirit means enthusiasm your self respect right. and your self motive like this okay. yeah i hope i could address what you said i think that's a wonderful perspective Yeah, thank you tamanna <laughs> um going on to our next question is uh secondly uh i would like to take a bit from bit of this from one of your initiatives sir mm. uh so you always had this thought where you wanted to uh bridge the pedagogic pedagogic gap between the urban schools and the rural schools Mm. i believe this is something you've always aspired to do and you are accomplishing it some way taking from the same as we talk of technology and technologically powered india and digital india um how far do you think when we talk of bridging gaps between developed cities and underdeveloped developed cities how far do you think people who are not accustomed to the digital format will be able to accept it when it starts coming into play actually there is a huge gap even if they are very good at their uh, regional language no one has made them to feel that yes you have that guts come out of this and you can do this one don't you know don't stop educating yourself who will do that because their parents are not educated they think that after seven you know why girls have to be educated many many such families are still there you know 20 30 percent of the girls are really even away from the because i want to see in those girls and the rural girls who are not competent enough to come to the stage and platform and having global exposure having new level generation education who will do that because can we just depend on their parents saying that you know because of uh, destiny their parents didn't make them study yes yeah. being human means not just talking big big things being human means beyond mm-hmm. talking what you are that is the real human being words are just you know one one platform to you know, express yourself then i come across that is the pers- that is the thing that i go to rural school to see that because i i can yeah see the future of india only in girls you know only in girls you know the girls have been kept away mostly you know you people are rich people you know you have all the experience and all but usually the girls community the women community have been kept away from the reality from the real world and this is this is the first generation of many generation where the woman has come and taken the leadership you know and when if men doesn't support them then india will lack in many things it's not only technology which will make india Absolutely. developed country it is women alone you know it is girls alone if we really educate them empower them because the whole family is depending on the girl i mean the woman and even do i am a man but i am a product of a woman you know my whole soul is connected Absolutely. to a woman you are right and then in this way there are millions of girls it's not only 10 you know one samiksha i gave the example it's really because such kind of contribution will empower the you know the sight in uh, spirit inside and then you take the help of technology and then you take the help of the world then the real miracle happens Otherwise, keeping you know, always keeping somebody suppressed under you, 
you know, uh, making them to follow you. How long? Many kings did this, but did they achieve anything? Nothing. So we need to have the different mode of thinking along with technology, giving chance to the True. rural girls. Uh, like taking from what you said, sir, I think that's what counts. We read a lot. We're so full with so much of data overload, mm. so many statistics, so much of data from so many places, but who actually knows what happens where? Yeah, who knows yeah. where all this is actually tangible, where it comes to? So when you give examples like that, people actually know where efforts are going, where efforts can be put in. Mm -hmm. All this can actually be actualized. Empowerment can become a reality. Totally vision cool. is always vision but as i said translating it to reality is skeptical of and they need to be shown more examples that it really happens there in the world where there are people who can pioneer to do it so thank you so much on this <laughs> i would like dishti to add something to this please. Um, thanks sami first of all i would like to show my regards to sir santosh thalagati I find your personalized approach to training very attractive and I'm excited to work under you and like guide with your principles as much as possible. 